This video is specifically for Denver, Colorado straight pool league players and their score sheet. But anyone who plays straight pool will benefit from this information. We will not be covering the rules of straight pool here. I will put a link to the official rules in the description. Scorekeeping straight pool should not be complicated. I hope to keep this video short and sweet, so let's get to it. Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. There are many tools for keeping score of straight pool games. Historically, players used numbered beads strung above the table. Many tables have rotating number wheel counters. There are paper score sheets in countless formats, and now quite a few apps for your smartphone. No matter what system you use, you need to understand the basics. Straight pool scorekeeping involves tracking two scores for each player, the rack score and the game or total score. The rack score is each player's points for each individual rack while the total score is each player's cumulative rack scores. Let's look at a quick example with the pool balls only before learning to use the score sheet. Every game of straight pool starts with a rack of 15 balls, and every successive rack starts with 15 balls as well, 14 rack balls and a brick ball. During any rack, the total number of balls on the table and each player's rack score should be 15. If it's not, you've miscounted. The player who is shooting does not need to keep count as they pocket balls. Instead, when your inning is over, you simply add the pocketed balls so far to the balls on the table and subtract from 15. The result will be your score for that inning. So the math looks like this. When the rack is over, 14 balls have been pocketed, the total of both players' rack scores will equal 14. It is here at the end of each rack that the count totals 14 instead of 15 because one ball remains on the table to break the next rack. The only other point to keep in mind is that fouls are subtracted from your total score, never from the rack score. Now, let's keep score of an example game using the Denver Straight Pool League score sheet. Each line on the score sheet represents one inning or one turn at the table for each player. There are four columns for each player. How the inning ended, a scratch, miss, or foul, the number of points scored during that inning, the subtotal if they scored more than 14 points, and the running total for that game. You will follow a very simple procedure at the end of every player's inning and another at the end of every rack. The procedure at the end of every player's inning involves three steps. Step one, mark how the inning ended, either a safety, a miss, or a foul. Step two, add the balls remaining on the table to all balls pocketed so far this rack and subtract from 15 to get the player's rack score. Step three, enter the total score. Okay, let's start a game. The first shot of the game is a safety. Step one, mark how the inning ended, a safety. Step two is easy, zero points were scored. Step three, the total score for player A is zero. Okay, let's assume that player B pockets four balls and then misses. Step one, mark an M for miss. Step two, 15 minus 11 balls on the table, minus zero for no other balls pocketed, equals four. Step three, player B's total score is now four. Now player A steps to the table and runs some balls. We can see here that player A ran five balls, but in real life, those balls are in the pockets of the table and they're mixed with player B's balls. So how many balls did they make? Step one, mark an M for the inning ending miss. Step two, determine the rack score. 15 minus six balls on the table, minus zero minus four for the two rack scores means player A pocketed five balls. Player A's rack score is five and their total score is now five as well. Now player B pockets some balls and ends their inning on a safety. Let's score their inning a little bit faster. 15 minus three minus nine equals three for a subtotal of seven points scored. 
And don't forget to mark a nest for the safety. And finally, player A makes the remaining two balls of this rack, leaving a break shot. And this is the special instance at the end of the rack when all of the rack scores add up to 14. But since this is the end of a rack, let's rack the balls and make a change to how we score those last two points for player A. Since they are still shooting, let's move that two all the way to the left side of the points column. That way, if they continue to run more balls, we'll have room to write down their score. And then let's add a slash mark to indicate the end of the rack. This slash mark is the key to keeping your point totals straight because the slash mark indicates the beginning and end of each rack. So you know that the rack scores between each slash mark always add up to 14. We'll revisit that idea in just a moment, but first, Let's assume that player A starts channeling John Schmidt and they run two racks in a row. How do we score that? Just write down 14 followed by a slash to indicate the end of the rack. Next, player A makes the break shot, pockets two more balls, and then plays an intentional foul. So the intentional foul means that player's inning is over. So we go to the three-step process. Step one, mark an F for the foul. Step two, determine the rack score. 12 balls on the table minus no rack scores yet equals three. Step three, this is the first time we're gonna use the subtotal column to add up player A's nice run of 33 balls, giving them a total score of 38. But wait a minute, player A ended their inning on an intentional foul. That's a minus one to his score. You don't take it from the rack score or the subtotal. You subtract it from the total, their total is now 37. By the way, if player A had kept running racks and you ran out of room in the points column, just continue the score in the next row. And when you do that, player B should skip that row to keep each inning alternating from left to right, top to bottom for players A and B. It'll take no time at all to become comfortable with keeping score, and you'll see just how simple it is. For example, assume you are player B here, you shoot some balls, and then you miss. You don't need to count the balls as you're shooting. The first thing you do when you miss is count the number of balls that are on the table. Add to the current rack scores, subtract from 15, and you've made five balls. If we assume player A clears the table for the next rack, their score would be marked as a six followed by a slash. I just want to impress one last time how important it is to mark the beginning and end of every rack with that slash. Notice that six, five, and three, the rack scores between the last two slash marks add up to 14. If you remember to do these three simple steps at the end of every single player's inning, you'll never lose your place on the score sheet and you'll always have a perfectly accurate score.